Good morning. Good morning. Hi, good morning. You bring back something from our childhood this morning. The original Grinch movie. Hey on Facebook. Good morning, everybody. Was singing without any presence at all. He hadn't stopped Christmas from coming. It came somehow or other. It came just the same. And the Grinch with his Grinch feet, ice cold in the snow, stood puzzling and puzzling. How could it be so? It came without ribbons. It came without tags. Good morning. You're in the right place. Good morning. It's Monday Morning Mojo. We're going to get started. He puzzled and buzzed till his puzzle of a saw. Then the Grinch thought of something he hadn't before. Maybe Christmas, he thought, doesn't come from a store. Maybe Christmas, perhaps, means a little bit more. Good morning. All right, it is Monday morning, and I am so glad that you're here. Uh, in just a few short days, millions of people around the world will celebrate Christmas. And for each one of us, it's unique. Uh, it has unique meaning and significance with lots of memories and tradition. And uh, all of that is folded in together along with some faith and hope for um, what is to come in the new year. And for some people, it might even bring feelings of sadness or despair. So I want to talk to you today about magic. And, you know, that is one of the definitions of mojo is that there is an element of magic in mojo. And I think that December is a really magical time. It's full of holidays to represent miracles in our life and to express love and good cheer. And this is a time for us to remember and honor the past while we look forward to the future and again, pray for good things to come. You know, for me, um, it's Christmas has always been my favorite time of year. I love this time of year um, and it's always been magical for me and I don't think that will ever change. And I can remember as a, as a child waiting in anticipation for Santa to come and really wonder how on the, in the world he could get it all done and how he could be in so many places at once. And I can also remember as a child uh, in CCD class, I, I was raised uh, in the Catholic church and uh, sitting in, in religious instruction or CCD, some of you know what I'm talking about, uh, wondering how God could be everywhere too, just like Santa. Uh, and that's what you know kids think. And um, I also can remember thinking and wondering how this little baby could be born in a manger on Christmas. And you know, so long ago with such a big job, like we were taught, we knew the job that this baby had come to do which was to come and really change the world. So for a kid, that's a lot of questions and a lot of excitement all, all rolled up. And I'm grateful that I have not outgrown any of that. I'm grateful that I haven't grown out my sense of curiosity and my willingness to ask questions, uh, which I still do. And uh, I'm always looking for answers and seeking answers. And I'm still in awe of, of the wonder of, of everything that happens in this world, honestly, good, bad, and indifferent. And I am, I'm really in awe of who we've been created to be. And in my spirit, I know that that is probably the greatest mystery and the greatest opportunity too. And I hope that my spirit reflects that in everything that I do. Um, and I'm still seeking to feel and see the magic of Christmas right now. Um, I felt so compelled to share this message to you. I've written it all out. So I just want you to realize that in, in doing this for you this morning, I really got reflective and I really got thinking about what so many of us might be feeling at this time. 
And that, you know, whether you're celebrating Christmas or not in, in the way that I might celebrate Christmas, that's, that's inconsequential. Um, but I think for me, I'm still seeking and will always seek the miracles and the wonder that this season brings and the hope that it brings with it. Um, I think it's a time to celebrate each other and to give to each other, to give of ourselves. And so, you know, I'm always good for putting a question out there to you. So I'll, I'll ask you to write this one down. What will you do to give of yourself in the next few days? And maybe I can give you some inspiration for that. And that's how I choose to see Christmas in, in my eyes. I mean, you know, this year is going to be exciting because I have a new granddaughter. So it's her first Christmas and to see things through her eyes is really awesome. And, you know, I think that there has to be at least one day of the year where we can feel that kind of excitement, that kind of joy, that kind of love. Um, and it reminds us that we are just really a speck in, in something much bigger than ourselves. And I think when we can go outside of ourselves and think bigger like that, so many things that might weigh us down, some things could seem less heavy, right? And so the magic of Christmas doesn't really have to start and end on December 25th, does it? It could continue all year long. And because Christmas doesn't need to be just one day, um, what will you do to carry it around in your heart all the time? Because I think that Christmas is more than a season. It's really a feeling. And, you know, whatever your focus and belief is, um, and whether that focus and belief is rooted in the miracle that occurred in Bethlehem over 2000 years ago, or if it's rooted in the belief of the jolly uh, man in a red suit that travels the world in just one night to give presents to boys and girls, or whether you celebrate the winter solstice or Hanukkah or Kwanzaa, or just the ability to have some fun and make Christmas cookies and give some presents, whatever that is, this is an opportunity to level up in joy and gratitude, to connect with family and friends, and to really spread something that is positive. And so I, um, inspired by Dr. Seuss this morning, uh, Dr. Seuss said, Christmas will always be as long as we stand heart to heart and hand in hand. And so this Christmas time, we know also is different for all of us. There's really no denying that, and there's no getting away from that. Uh, no one is unaffected or has been unaffected by this global pandemic. And some of us have been affected in more ways than others. And some people are dealing with some hard times right at this very moment. And I understand that. And I can say, I can look around and I can say trees are decorated. Uh, you know, they're up, how homes are lit up, presents may have been bought, um, but it's different. It's weird, right? It's, we know there's something else going on. You know, shopping is a challenge, if any of you have tried to do it out there with face masks and hand sanitizer and fogged up glasses, it's not so easy. Um, and then we have all those questions like, do I order online and do curbside pickup or do I go in the store? Do I just get everything from Amazon? Do I give gift cards? Do I just email? Do I just forget the whole thing? Um, will I see my family and friends? How many people can I have over? What is it going to look like? If I ask someone to come over for dinner, are they going to feel uncomfortable, right? There's all these questions. And I know that normally this time of year is very busy uh, for all of us. You know, I I was saying to my husband last night, by now we would have gone to, I don't know, a dozen different business and or personal gatherings. Uh, we would have had probably at least two or three things here at my house by now or, or planning to. And um, so, so we're on pause right now. This is not the year that we're going to do those things. Um, and, and all those questions can be endless and they can lead us to worry and they can lead us to feel uneasy. Um, and I know it has for a lot of you. And, and I know myself included, when this all started nine months ago, I did not think we would still be here today. Um, and I, I knew it wouldn't be over in quite two weeks, but I didn't think that by the end of the year, we would still be dealing with the same feelings of separation and, and you know, concerns for our health and watching other people that we love, perhaps, you know, struggling with different things from health and, and other maybe financial impacts from this pandemic. 
um, I mean, I don't think I'm alone, right? I'm sure there are a lot of you who, who probably could agree, didn't think we'd still be here, but yet here we are. And so as I try to inspire and teach, we have to first accept our reality. So here is where we are. And it's Christmas. And just like we learned in the, in the movie, The Grinch, who stole Christmas, he wasn't able to steal Christmas, was he? And I think that if you are determined to still feel Christmas in your heart, nothing can steal Christmas from you either. And so I think that we can focus on all the things that are missing and we can focus on all the things that are different and we can focus on all the things that are wrong or we can focus on the things that we have to be grateful for and we can focus on the things that we have within our power to do. And none of this sounds any different than probably what we've talked about week after week here on Monday Morning Mojo. Yet at this time of year, it's so much more meaningful because no one can make you feel anything, only you can. So this is your opportunity to decide really what your first step is. And the first step, like it is all the time, is setting your mindset, setting your mindset on the right track and setting your mindset on how you want to feel because whatever you think is how you will feel. And so Calvin Coolidge said, Christmas is not a time nor a, a season, but a state of mind to cherish peace and goodwill, to be plenteous in mercy. And that is to have the real spirit of Christmas. So change is not easy. And I understand that change is hard for a lot of people. And this year has been full of change. And a lot of people have had to really adjust and pivot and shift very quickly. And I know that this year has been full of endless changes and all those questions, right? And yet we've worked through them. If you're listening to this, you're here. You're still here and you've worked through them. And maybe on some days you work through them with more grace than others, but you can figure it out. And so as we are winding down this year and looking at a new year, we can choose to be concerned and fearful about what that will bring. We can choose to worry about what's going to happen with a new uh, president and what all these new things are going to be. But at the end of the day, we can only control our thoughts and we can only control how we respond to the things happening around us. And we can choose how we want to spend these next few days and how you want this Christmas season to really, I think, warm and expand your heart. And so even though it's different and even though it feels different, can we still keep some traditions alive? Can you still create some new traditions too? So maybe this is the first year you and your family do a Zoom holiday sing-along. Maybe it's the first time your family's ever sang along together. And because it is different and we can't all be together, maybe it's time that we do something fun on, on Zoom or FaceTime. Maybe it's a cocktail party with friends on Zoom. Whatever it is, I know that we're expected to be physically distant, but we don't necessarily need to be socially distant. And don't let yourself feel closed off from anyone that you love and care about. So use technology, use whatever means you can to feel connected and to spread that, that love, that joy that this holiday season really keeps in, in the top of our mind. And so most years, you know, I, I can say myself, like we can get caught up in a lot of the frenzy that the holiday season brings, right? Uh, we start to stress over all these parties and mixers and things we have to go to and shopping and wrapping and baking and decorating and, and how many people, you know, we're going to be feeding and parties and all this stuff. And so maybe this is the year that we've been given a different gift. Maybe this is the year where we've been given the gift of time and space and the ability to slow down a little bit. And maybe this is where we can get more comfortable being with ourselves, where we can get more comfortable being in our own thoughts. And so maybe this year, 2020 has given us something positive. Is it possible that we've learned how to really appreciate our home more? and to appreciate the people around us more. And without all of the fast paced activities that many of us are used to, has it brought other things to light, other things to our attention? Is that a blessing itself? Is that a gift? And so I think that this is a great time for you to fill your sack and play Santa. What if you could fill your sack with gifts to give, to 
maybe hundreds of people. What could you do to fill your sack with gifts of gratitude, recognition, and love, and appreciation and, and recognition for those people in your life who are special to you? From those close family and friends to the coworker that always makes you smile or is the one you can talk to when you're having a bad day, to your pastor, your mail carrier, your stylist, your insurance agent, your realtor, your teacher, the nurse, the doctor, the dentist, right? I can go on and on. All the people, the UPS driver, all the people around you that sometimes we see almost on a daily basis. And yet, do we take the time to stop and say, I see you, I appreciate you, I'm grateful for you. And you can say that in many ways, short and sweet, long and meaningful. You can text it, you can email it, you can send it through Facebook, you can be on a Zoom call, you can write a letter, you can call, whatever, it doesn't matter, right? You can send a carrier pigeon to their window with a note on the, on the bird's foot for all I care. But could you fill your sack with these gifts of appreciation, gratitude, and recognition? And if you give that away, what do you get in return? See, I believe that we don't have to give in to the stress and the anxiety. We can, even in our darkest moments, and believe me, I have had many. Trust me when I tell you I have. And even in my darkest moments, I've been able to feel gratitude, and I've been able to feel love, and I've been able to feel peace. And so I believe that when you take the time to express those things to other people, you get it back in return. So be your own Santa. Take the next few days and make a list of the people you want to give a gift to. And the best part is you don't even have to wrap. You just have to give. You just have to give the gift. So I think you get the idea. But I think if we could show someone in our world that we see them and recognize them and that we appreciate them, um, I think that it makes everyone's heart get a little bit bigger. Right. And so, again, I'm reminded of, of our childhood movie from from the Grinch. Um, so to end with a quote from the Grinch or from the movie, I'm going to say, then the Grinch thought of something he hadn't before. What if Christmas, he thought, doesn't come from a store? What if Christmas perhaps means just a little bit more? So I hope that this Christmas season, whatever it means to you, is important and significant I hope and wish you and your family love and peace and some fun. I wish that you have some fun and enjoy just being together in any way, shape, or form that you can. Even if it's on a Zoom call, it can still be an opportunity to feel connected and to tell that person how much they mean to you. And I just want to say how much you mean to me. Uh, these last several months have been an amazing journey with you, and I look forward to continuing this in the new year and bringing you a lot more content and a lot more ideas to stretch your mind, to expand your career, to create opportunities for your personal growth. And uh, I'm, I really, I'm grateful for this platform and how you've allowed me to start your week with you for so many months now. And uh, I look forward to seeing more of you in the coming year. So I love you and wish you all a happy holiday season. I will be here with you again next Monday, and I look forward to sharing uh, 20 lessons that 2020 has taught me, and, uh, and then really springboarding into an action-packed year of opportunity and growth, because that's what we're going to do. We're going to grow, and we're going to do the things that we've always wanted to do, and we're going to seek those answers to the questions that you have, and I'm looking forward to being a part of that journey with you. So... If you have any questions or thoughts, feel free to put them in the chat. If you have any questions or thoughts, feel free to put them on the Facebook page. Uh, hi, good morning. Good morning, Merry Christmas to you. Merry so. Christmas. Happy New Year. Thank uh, you so much. I have just recently started um, Jill, I can't pronounce her last name, <laughs> but she's got me doing this. Um, Jill Vericchio? Uh, yeah. Oh, great. So um, she's not online right now. I've been trying to get her. So you wonder why she's not on, but she's my neighbor and we do talk to each other and stuff like that. But um, she keeps telling me because I, I did not like this election so far and I, it was not good for me at all. Um, 
but I'm trying to get a positive attitude. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I always give on Christmas, Christmas, even really, um, I uh, have kids in different, I adopted kids in different countries with through compassion. Um, and I have three kids, Nelson, John, and I forget the other kid's name, but I give them Christmas, I, every month I give them money, um, Christmas gifts also. And, um, but another thing I did just recently, um, I went to the store yesterday, I seen a guy who was homeless, he was freezing. I gave him the gloves I had, that's it. You beautiful. Know. So. Awesome, God bless you, that's beautiful. Thank you for sharing. You're welcome. So the littlest things can mean so much, right? Yes. Yeah, that's great. Thank you. Nice. I'm glad you're here, Anastasia. All right, my friends, I, again, wish you a happy holiday season. Let's just start with today, though. Can you make today a great day? Hi, Michelle. I see you came off the uh, mute. Good morning. Hi. <clears throat> yeah, I think, well, there's a couple things. Um, I think we've all said this before, but I think everyone who's here is grateful for you and what you bring oh, you. every Monday for us. It does set the week off the right way. And I notice if, um, if, if it's a Monday that I can't make it, it definitely changes my outlook on the week and, and how I function. It does, it's just, it does, it, it changes it for the better every Monday. And, you know, I think it does. It was, <laughs> oh God, thank you. <laughs> and I think I speak for all of us that are on here. So thank you for what you bring. And I think we all appreciate each other knowing that there's people who want to make the world a better place and, you know, even start your day off the right way. And it just leads me to think like, there's a lot of people I know that are really struggling with not being able to be together. And I know you're saying Zoom, et cetera. And, and that's the one thing that I've been trying to do is even if it doesn't necessarily work great in my schedule, trying to do what I can for those people so that yeah. they are not as, I mean, some people, like you said, this is a sad time of year for them. And it is. Doing, you know, there's, there's a real, there's a real, um, I don't know what to call it, but it's a blue Christmas, right? Absolutely. So that's real for people. And, and you can feel blue, right? For many reasons, grief and maybe, and believe me, I'm not making light of anything anyone's going through, whether it's the loss of a loved one, whether it's illness, whether it's um, financial despair, it, 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 loss of a job, right? I mean, it's, I get it. And, and I mean it when I say I've been through a lot myself. Mm -hmm. And, and so I can, the only thing I can give you at this point, right, is support, love, hope, a yep. different a way of, of looking at it differently, encouraging you to look at it differently, um, because, you know, we have to believe that we can get through it, and we have to believe that we can persevere, yeah. and uh, like you said, Michelle, a lot of people, um, you know, can't be together, and, uh, and I, you know, myself, I've, I look, I've been looking back, and expressing so much gratitude for the way I grew up. You know, my mom is one of five and we just always had Christmas with my grandparents, both sets. We would go back and forth, but Christmas, like most of the day was spent on my mom's side of the family and dinner and presents and everything. Like everybody, all yeah. of her siblings, all of the kids. I mean, we were 40 people for, for Christmas every year. And even like you know, other holidays too, that was our norm. And I just, didn't think anything of it, right? When some when some of my friends in school would say, "Yeah, it was, you know, five or seven of us," I was like, "Really?" You know, because yeah. <laughs> we yeah. just totally we the extended family was the nuclear family in the way I was raised, and mm -hmm. I miss that, you know, and I miss my cousins and aunts and everybody, and we're all spread out in different ways, and uh, it's been a long time since we've had a Christmas like that, right? So it wasn't just because of of COVID or 2020; it's just life changes, and everyone starts to have their own families. And so I just said to Matt yesterday, you know, when, when we can do it, I want to have, you know, a big summer barbecue or something and get everyone together. Yeah. I've done it a few times before, but, you know, I, we could really dwell on the loss. We could really dwell on the things that we're missing. And I could too. And I could get very sad over the things that are not the people that aren't here anymore. Yeah. I can get choked up even thinking about it. Right. See, yeah. I come from a large family. But, so. Yeah, you know, and 
we have to also be, you know, just mindful of that life is always changing. Yep. Things don't stay the same. And so I think when we fight that is when we can really get overwhelmed by change. And we have to understand that, you know, so whether it's it's what's been going on in 2020 with COVID, political stuff, social inequality, and all the things, I mean, it seems like everything got jam-packed into this year, right? And I want to believe it's to probably teach us a lesson and to show us the things that are important in life. Because so much of it I cannot change. But yeah. I can change what I think. I can change what I feel and I can change how that makes me act. Yep. And that means that I have the ability to, to impact my world, right? The people in my world. And, and that can be this big or it can be this big, right? Because even using a, a, a social media platform like this means my world can get bigger. And so I have to choose how I show up. And I think, you know, for me, this Monday Morning Mojo has been a blessing because I made a commitment and I have to think about what I want to say to you. And I have to think about how I want to show up and I have to do it authentically, right? Because that's not, I'm not a phony. And right. so you've kept me on track this year too. Like this has really helped me to stay on track. So I love and appreciate what you said. It keeps me focused for the week too, well, right? Hey, so, job so far. But, oh, thank you. <laughs> and so I appreciate having the opportunity to do it, you know, because it keeps me going in, in the right direction also. Yeah, but it definitely proves that that giving, not just at Christmas, but throughout the year is, is um, really important. It's that mindset that you are, you're doing it throughout the year and it does make a big difference. I can't tell you how many times I've taken your message and carried that forward into a few, you know, a conversation that day or, you know, interacting with, I know like my mom's a perfect example. She's really struggling through the holidays because <clears throat> her husband's almost like phobic about this virus and yeah. won't let her I don't mean to say he won't let her but yeah he's not comfortable with her doing being out right correct nobody's been in their house since March etc yeah. cetera, etc cetera. and she's really struggling with with not being with her family and like she'll come here and stuff but sharing some of your messages I think have I remember one day she's crying and crying and she's trying to pretend that nothing's wrong on the phone I'm like mom what is wrong and when she finally told me you know being able to give some of the messages from here like focusing on what you can change and being grateful for what you do have etc cetera, etc cetera. by the end she was happy and smiling and so yeah. When you shift your mindset, you shift your, your perception, which will change your world, really, literally, because it's how you're seeing the world right now, yep. right? You can see the world as a, a restricted, um, difficult place, or you can see the world as something far better and far different, which is how I choose to see the world. And mm -hmm. I choose to believe, I don't know exactly how long this will be, but I choose to believe this is all temporary. Yep. We'll look back at on this as, as, you know, a part of our lives, but not our whole life. And, and, you know, again, with great change, you have to ask yourself, well, how will I change for the better? How will I come out of, on the other side of this better than before? Well, I think in change management, I mean, just you learn through change management, the function of it, people automatically start thinking what's in it for me, right? So if you start looking at it from a perspective of what, what is the positive, what is, what's in this for me? What, how can I take this and turn it into something positive, beneficial, et cetera? It does change how you approach it and how you interact with others through it. Yeah, absolutely. Definitely does. Thank you, Michelle. I appreciate what you said very much. Thank you. All right, everyone. Well, it is 8.02 and I'm going to let you get on to your day. And again, thank you so much. Have a wonderful, blessed week. And I'll see you back here on Monday. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Thank you. Bye.